Welcome to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. I'm so glad to have you here with me tonight. We have some important things to talk about. I will not be interviewing a guest tonight, but I'm very excited to let you know that next month in May, leading up to Memorial Day and to D-Day, every show we do will have something to do with veterans. I will either be talking with a veteran or someone who works with veterans, and of course, will culminate the month with my dad, who is a favorite of many of you who know this show. And it's going to be really exciting because we're going to be doing a show with him and his best friend from 75 years ago, Navy days. They found each other, and it's quite an amazing story that you're going to want to hear. So that'll be coming up next month. But today, um, I want to talk to you about grief. Most of you know I am a life transition coach. I'm a grief expert. It's, it is my area of expertise. Life transitions always include loss, and loss produces grief. And we have a lot of grief going on in the world right now. We talked about that a bit a few weeks ago, but I want to look at it from a little different perspective today. Before I do, I want to mention my books, because you know I am an author. I have written this one called Chakras, the Magnificent Seven, which is a great little guide to how to balance those energy centers called chakras that have a lot to do with body, mind, and spirit. And the more highly balanced those chakras are, the better you function on all levels, physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional. So that's Chakras the Magnificent Seven. Then you may remember that a few years ago, I launched this book called Grief, When Will This Pain Ever End? And this is not a book you have to read from cover to cover because so often grievers are having a very difficult time concentrating on even the simplest things. So I don't ask them to read that whole book. It's filled with short chapters, with articles, processes, tools you can use to move through your grief. And then finally, I wrote this book, Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say. And this is really the core of a lot of what I want to talk about today. Because when people are sad, when they are grieving, when they've dealt with loss, it's very difficult for people on both sides. It's difficult for the sad person, and it's very difficult for friends to really know exactly what to do. And most of the time, they don't know what to do. And so they do nothing. They don't show up. They don't call because they're afraid. They don't want to intrude, but they also are scared to death that this person they might say something to this sensitive, already hurting person and make things worse. So I'm going to talk tonight in detail and in depth about some things that you definitely want to avoid saying when someone is dealing with grief. So before I do that, I would like to just remind you that you can learn more about my work as a speaker, as a life transition coach, and you can access my books. They're both on Amazon, but you can also get to them through my website, paulashaw.com. Very simple, paulashaw.com. On that site, also, I want to encourage every one of you to grab my free gift, which is a cheat sheet. That's it, plain and simple. It's a cheat sheet taken from this book, Saying the Right Thing When You Don't Know What to Say. And it has lists of things that are helpful to say and lists of things that are not helpful to say. 
and it's just a great thing to keep in the glove box or in your briefcase or your purse so that if a difficult conversation comes up, you can take a quick glance at it and feel more prepared to be an effective listener and a good comfort and support person. So that's available for you on paulashaw.com. And then one last website to talk about, changeituprradio.com. This is where we archive all of our shows and where you can get information about being a guest or a sponsor of this show. And as most of you know, we are on every major podcast platform, so you can find past shows on those platforms as well. But on changeituprradio.com, you will find, <clears throat> excuse me, access to show notes that are very thorough with great information. If you hear someone on this show and you think, oh, I'd love to check them out or go to their website or even contact them, Change It Up Radio is where you can get that information. So please check us out in all those places. And of course, don't forget, we have a Facebook page, we have an Instagram page, and we have a YouTube channel. So the video of all our past shows also lives on YouTube. All right, so let's get into the subject here. Let's get into this topic. Um, because recently I heard a very moving interview on one of my favorite podcasts. It's a podcast called Smartless, which is good for a lot of laughs. But the person they were interviewing was Michael Lewis, who was the author of such books as Moneyball, uh, the Blind Side, one of my all-time favorite movies, The Big Short. Michael is an amazing writer, but I think he's an even more amazing man. And one of the things that he so beautifully shared was his experience about having lost just a year ago his 19-year-old daughter and her 20-year-old boyfriend. I can't begin to imagine what kind of hell that would be. But he said several things in the course of his sharing that really sparked the thought in my mind, we need a review. We need a review show. We need to talk about the things that are not helpful. So right at the top of the list, and I really want you to take these five words and pretty much never say them again. Because in any circumstance, they're really just kind of bullshit. And those five words are, I know how you feel. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because unless you're inside that person's mind and body, unless you have had all the exact identical experiences in growing up, in living, in, in the parents you had, the friends you had, the school you went to, you don't know how that person feels because how they feel is a conglomerate of everything they've experienced in their lifetime. And the worst thing you can say to someone who is sad, hurting, upset is, I know how you feel. I went through the same thing. So let me say this very clearly and please hear it. A similar experience does not necessarily create a similar feeling. Feelings are created from within. They are a product of who we are, where we've been, what we've done, who raised us, what we experienced. There's so many things that go into the feelings. Everyone's feelings are unique even in the same situation. Let's use the example of graduation. Some people on graduation day are ecstatic, euphoric, can't wait to throw that cap in the air and move on with their lives. Other people are scared. Some people are anxious. Some are terribly sad because they don't want to lose the friends and the moments and the experiences that they've had that they cherish. 
So you see how coming into that very same experience, everybody's going to walk down the aisle, everybody's going to get a diploma, and everyone's going to leave the auditorium. But they will not all have had the same experience. So when somebody has experienced a loss, whether it's a job loss, a health loss, a, a death, a partner, loss of a partner, whatever it is, how they experience it is going to be unique. Even to how they might have experienced a similar loss in the past. Because only right here, right now, who we are comes together and creates our feelings. So even if you've lost a job in the past, if you lose one today, the way you respond to it can be completely different. Completely. So I know how you feel is never, in my opinion, never a truthful or an appropriate or a helpful thing to say. In fact, what I would suggest, what's even more helpful is to say, I can't possibly know exactly how you feel, but I know when something similar happened to me, I felt, and then fill in the blank. That's legitimate, that's authentic, but you cannot know how, even if they tell you how they think they feel in that moment, it may not really be how they feel. So if you go into a conversation with someone, especially someone who's had a loss as tragic as a child loss, please don't presume to tell them that you know how they feel. We're going to look at some other statements that are equally unhelpful when we come back from this little break. So please stay with us. Because I think if you really pay attention to this show today, you can count on having such better experiences in the future when you want to help someone you love. Okay, we'll be right back. Welcome back to Change It Up Radio with Paula Shaw. We're talking about things that are helpful to say to someone who's in emotional pain. And even more importantly, things that are not helpful helpful, that I would really hope you will avoid like the plague. Because when somebody's already hurting, I know the last thing you want to do is hurt them more. And sometimes we don't realize that the things we're saying are actually causing more pain because they were said to us at some point. So many of the things we say to people, and I'll give you a few examples in a moment, are things somebody said to us or that we heard at a funeral or at some sad occasion. And there are things like, um, don't worry, this pain won't last forever. Or God doesn't give you a burden bigger than the back can bear. Sure doesn't feel like that when you're dying inside. Things like, well, at least you have other children when someone's lost a child. Horrendous, awful thing to say. When someone's lost an animal that they loved, well, get another one. A puppy would be great or a kitten. A kitten would be so great. No, that's not the same being that they loved. It isn't helpful to suggest that. So, one of my, on my list, on my top 10 of some of the worst things to say is time to move on and go forward with your life. It's time to move on and go forward with your life. Who are you to say time's up to someone who's hurting? You don't know when the right time is for them to move on. And if they could move on, don't you think they would? Do you think they're enjoying the agony, waking up in the morning with that pit in your stomach and that horrible feeling when you remember what's real in your life? Nobody wants to stay stuck in that. Nobody wants to do that 
for month after month and year after year. But this, one of the points that Michael Lewis made, the, the author that I referred to in our first segment is, nobody can dig you out of this hole. You have to find your way out. You have to figure out how to put your life back together and then move forward. And until you've done that, you don't have much choice about where you are. You are where you are. And when someone says to you, you got to get on with your life, you know, you've been grieving long enough. Oh my Lord, if that isn't a perfect setup for a big fat punch in the face, I don't know what is. Please, don't anybody in my life ever tell me, time's up, you've been doing this long enough. Please, allow people their process. Now, can you offer support? Can you offer a suggestion maybe of, of someone you talked to when you went through something like this? A way that you felt and what you did about it? Sure, but don't think that because it worked for you, it's necessarily the right thing for them. And don't impose it on them. Don't give them the card of your therapist and say, call tomorrow. I'll check and see how it went. No, don't do that. Pressure is not what helps people heal. It just makes them feel more defective. And that's the problem. When somebody's having difficulty moving on, they feel defective. They feel like something's wrong with me. Everybody else seems to get over things, but here I am still crying, still hurting about this loss. 10 months later, you're not defective. You're just going through your process. What's been created in you through the life experiences that you have had. So don't let anybody tell you time's up. You do what you need to do for you. Another, another thing people often say that truly isn't really helpful, especially when there's a death. Well, they had a good life. They, they were old. They lived a long time. They had a good life. Well, you know what? I can tell you personally, my parents are 91 and 96. And when it's their time, and they're gone. I'm not going to miss them less because they got to live a long time. I might even miss them more because I've never known my life without them. Think about that. So never presume that a circumstance that you perceive is perceived or experienced in the same way by someone else. So the fact that somebody lived a long time doesn't mean that we shouldn't miss them just as much as anyone else. I mentioned a, a situation a moment ago that's another one that so often wounds people. And that is usually if someone else is a dog lover or a cat lover, an animal lover, they understand when someone loses that furry friend, it can be as bad and as painful as losing a human friend. Absolutely. Sometimes I truly have had clients tell me it's worse because the animal never did anything that hurt you or upset you. The animal usually just represented joy and love. So the pain over that loss can be even bigger, deeper. So I guess the overall message that I'm trying to convey here is feel your own feelings, but don't presume that anyone else is feeling what you feel. Allow them the dignity, allow them the safety and the love of being able to feel what they feel without judgment or criticism. That is is so important. One of the things that Michael Lewis pointed out in his interview was loss. What loss is really about 
is a loss of the love. The loss of the love that you knew with that person or that circumstance. And so what you really need is love, right? He had a friend when he lost his daughter. His friend was there within hours of getting the news with groceries and said, you don't have to entertain me. You don't have to do anything. I'm going to sit in my car, but I'm, I will not leave. I am here for you. I will not leave. And Michael Lewis said, that still moves him so much. And he realized that the reason why was because what a statement of love. This person insisted that he be able to be there in case anything was needed by Michael Lewis. That is beautiful. And that is so true. What we need when we're hurting more than anything is love. We need love and we need the understanding and the compassion and the comfort that can come with it. So if you have a friend that's hurting and you're worried because you don't exactly know what to say and you don't want to make it worse, this is one of the best things you can do and one of the simplest. You just go over and you see them and you say, I don't even know what to say. This must be so painful for you. And then you shut up and hug them. Just hold them. Just let them feel the safety and the comfort of being held in your arms. You might call and say, listen, I know you don't feel like talking, but what if I bring dinner over and we just watch a movie? Having somebody else there can be so comforting, but the demand of socializing can be way more than a person can handle. So let your friend, your family member, whoever is hurting in your life that you want to help, let them know that you love them. Let them know that you're there, but don't demand anything of them. Don't expect they're going to offer you even a glass of water or a cup of coffee. Get it yourself if you're there or offer to get one for them. Because trust me, when you're really grieving, you don't think about social graces. You don't think about what somebody else needs because you're in such a state of need of your own. So just be there with unconditional love. Don't give advice. Don't give criticism and don't give directions, really, truly, because all those things just make that sad person feel more defective, more unable to handle what's happening in their life. It's like giving them a list of shoulds and they're not capable of any of those shoulds. And when we're not capable of the shoulds, we feel like we've blown it somehow, don't we? Yeah. So love, sometimes the less you say, the better. And here I'm going to take the pressure off you right now of being the guru. You don't have to have a wise, wonderful piece of wisdom for them. They may not be able to hear it anyway. You don't have to have the answers. You don't. Just show up with love. Just show up with a listening ear and an open heart. If you can give those things to someone you love, if you can give those things to them, then you are giving them everything. You're giving them what they need most. And when we feel loved and when we feel safe, then we can do the inner work we need to do to heal. So be there. Be there to bring the love and create the safety. And there's nothing more fabulous, more valuable that you could offer. That's how you love your sad friend. 
that's how you really, truly help. Thank you. Thank you for listening to what I've shared today. Remember, there's a world of grievers out there. If it isn't the pandemic or the changes that have come as a result of it, there's the situation in Ukraine. And then there's just the regular life stuff. We all are going through so much right now. There's so much grief out there. It's really worth the time and the effort all of us can take to just sharpen our skills a little bit, learn things that can truly be helpful. Because today, the moment you leave your house, or you don't even have to leave your house, <laughs> pick up your phone, get on your computer, I guarantee you, you're going to encounter someone who's dealing with grief. And when you do, if you bring that open heart and that listening ear, it's all you need. You don't have to have the wisdom of the ages. Just love. Just love. Thank you. And please remember to be with us next week when we begin our May month of amazing veterans and amazing people serving veterans. All right. Thank you all for being with me. I love you guys. Bye-bye.